What's happening guys? I want to thank you first of all for the 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Yeah! It really means a lot. Uh, it's going to help me, you know, be a little bit more motivated to do some of the stuff that everybody's watching and wants to subscribe to the channel. Now, today we're going to do a review of the Boston Sack Shop Heritage Neck. <laughs> So this neck has a lot of great qualities that I was looking for um, kind of out of my Lupifaro neck that I just couldn't get. Uh, really the number one thing was projection. I feel like the Lupifaro neck that I have, while it's really great, didn't have the projection of like the Con that I was used to playing on or the silver plated Mark VI that I had um, or even some other Mark VI's that I played in the past that I uh, really liked. Some of the qualities from those necks uh, and now those horns was missing a little bit from the Lubafaro. Now I still like the sound of it and I got the projection that I could get out of it, but there was always a little bit missing. And I, I texted Jack at the Boston Sack Shop and I said, uh, hey man, you know, I saw you guys have necks and we, we got in touch because of my Orlando Jazz Workshop and I, you know, and I was like, I'd love to be able to try them. And he got the, he sent me one back in November of 2018. <laughs> And uh, it was a great neck. Um, I really liked it. I just didn't have really the money at the time. I did have the money at the time, and uh, didn't really know what to what 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 to do. So I sent it back. You know, I, I played a Yamaha neck for a little while, the Yamaha V1 gold plated. <laughs> That's a great neck too. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but the main thing after this all happened in November of 2019, I or October, I bought his uh, ambassador case, which I'm going to do a review on later. Um, and with that, I was like, hey, you know, is there still same silver plated one? He has a bare brass version of it too. He sent it to me, and it's custom fit for my Lupa Faro, uh, and it plays really, really well. Uh, like I said, the two big things that it adds to my sound are core and projection. Uh, these are things that I felt like, like I said, I wasn't lacking in the Lupafaro, but there is something that I really, uh, the neck, the Lupafaro neck, that I really wanted from more of a vintage kind of horn, like a Mark VI or, a, or an older Con, um, that some modern horns don't have. And I've played this neck on other Mark VI's. <laughs> I've played it on other modern horns. Like this is like a rebuilt original Acura SBA with the Boston Sack Shop neck. Like P. Moriots and, and Yamahas and stuff like that. And it really doesn't do the same things that it does in Lupa Faro. So this setup, you know, it's is is kind of made uh, for each other in, in my opinion. The Lupa Faro is a darker horn. They're kind of modeled after the SBAs. You can look on their website, check it out. They're also doing a 50% off sale right now, I think until the end of the whole month of April. I'll have to check that out. Uh, and these horns are, are kind of modeled off of those SBAs or Mark VI. It's more on the SBA, uh, Super Balance Action. And uh, so it's a darker 
kind of horn and with this neck it just kind of evens out the brightness and the darkness that I want. I also play a very bright mouthpiece. My Silas mouthpiece has a high baffle, small chamber, super easy to play very bright on it. So this combination for me works really really well. Um, I don't think I'd be able to get the same sound, say if I was still playing my Mark VI, you know, that silver plated Mark VI I had. Um, if I put this silver neck on it, I don't think I'd be able to get the same depth that I get on the Lupifaro. Um, and I have some clips of me playing at the Boston Sack Shop neck on that Mark VI from 2018. Uh, and it's just, it's almost too bright, you know? Um, it was like a bright neck on a bright horn already. Uh, and it just, you know, it sounded okay, but it just wasn't what I wanted. And I think that was one of the factors of me not purchasing the neck that time. Um, but me knowing my horn now, I've, I've been playing the Lubufaro since 2018, um, summer of 2018. So me knowing my horn now, I kind of knew, okay, well this neck is gonna add that brightness and projection that I've been missing from the Lupifaro. So um, it was a purchase that I thought through a good amount and really wanted to make sure that um, I was doing the right thing for my horn. The curvature of the neck is a little bit taller, which is kind of more of like what the vintage necks um, of the sixes and the SBAs and, and the cons were, uh, were doing back then. So the air, it's, it's very free blowing. The neck makes the horn, I think, a little bit more free blowing too, which is another comfort thing for me that I like to have out of a horn. And what I'm used to, you know, from playing the con and, and other vintage horns. That was kind of the thought process behind why I purchased the neck. I know a lot of people ask, what, what's with the Lupafaro neck? What's with the Yamaha neck? To speak a little bit on the Yamaha neck, I really liked playing that when I was playing my uh, metal retro revival mouthpiece. It seemed that that mouthpiece is a medium chamber with no baffle. There's no baffle on that thing. And it really seemed to fit that type of mouthpiece. And I think, um, th different kinds of reeds, different kind of mouthpieces, different kind of necks, and different kind of horns all kind of match up. You know, you kind of have to equal things out. Just, this is just my opinion. You know, if you have a darker horn having a brighter neck or a brighter mouthpiece or a brighter reed, um, kind of can contrast it out. If you want a really dark sound, you know, have a dark horn, dark mouthpiece, you know, dark neck. And some people don't even switch their necks. They just either switch reeds or mouthpieces. Uh, the neck for me, and what I've learned from other players, uh, you know, is really what the resistance of the horn is like. You know, obviously if you have a leak or something like that, then you know, it can kind of come from that. But I remember my teacher, Alain Burdett, said, uh, he, has two, he has a Mark VI and he has two uh, Mark VI necks that he has um, that kind of are different, not darkness levels, but diff different free blowing levels. Uh, and he switches between them if, if he wants. But he said, he was like, you know, the neck is really what the life of the horn is. You know, the, the resistance and the free blowingness and sometimes even the core aspects of the horn. Like my Mark VI that I had had a uh, patch on the neck and I think that kind of hindered it from being as free blowing as it could be. Um, obviously my repairman did a really good patch job so it was hard to um, notice but I think that was one of the factors of why the horn uh, wasn't as free blowing as it could have been. Uh, now speaking back on the Yamaha neck, like I said, I've played the Yamaha neck with my Silas mouthpiece and with the Lupifaro, and it's a, it's a good sound, it's just not the brightness or projection that I wanted, and that's why I got the Boston Sack Shop neck in the first place. Uh, hopefully that answers any questions uh, on, on why I purchased it or anything like that. If you have any more questions, uh, hit me up in the comments, and please hit that subscribe button, it will mean a lot to me. Uh, next video I'm going to make are on the uh, Boston Sack Shop. Uh, reads and then his ambassador case. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, like I said, hit that subscribe button and uh, any questions in the comments. Follow me on my Instagram. I post lots of videos of me playing the neck and the horn and all that stuff uh, at RFD Jazz. And uh, I'll see you guys around. Stay safe out there.